non-competitive also doesn't mean a non-democratic jobs. Well, first of all, it means that there's a great imbalance uh, of power between uh, the BJP in power in India since, you know, 10 years and its adversaries. Uh, the opposition, despite many efforts at building an alliance, remain fragmented. Uh, it's not able to challenge a BJP that leaves no stone unturned to maximize its position. But the concern is not just about the imbalance between the BJP and its competitors, but about this election's free and fair character. Um, the allocation of political funding is heavily skewed in favor of the BJP. The BJP has misused its position of dominance to impair the opposition. Opposition leaders have been arrested over the past few months. The bank accounts of the largest opposition party have been frozen. Public institutions, including tax and security agencies, act in a partisan manner against opposition parties and leaders. The party uh, in, in the government exert uh, strong control over uh, the media, making it difficult for the opposition to make itself heard. And more seriously, perhaps, uh, the Election Commission is no longer considered an impartial arbiter of the electoral process. There is a growing distrust in voting systems, even though India still has a robust election infrastructure. In other terms, the democratic decline that we have seen in India uh, exacerbating over the past 10 years now affect its electoral process too. So suffice to say the BJP has used the machinery to weaken the opposition. How about in terms of influence over the media? Where are we with that? So, I mean, when the BJP came to power, it basically posited itself as you know, someone who distrusted media. Media was never on their side. Therefore, they created their own channels of communication on social media, their own uh, newspapers, their own television channels. And, and, and it put the traditional media in a position where they realized that they no longer had you know, a, a role to play or they no longer had the kind of influence or, or power of intermediary that traditionally the press uh, plays. And so they, has, they, they basically learn gradually to, you know, toe the line. The government also uses uh, a major source of revenue for the media, uh, government advertisement, as an instrument to reward and punish uh, media that are more or less compliant. And again, the, the, the state has been using uh, public institutions to go after, to target uh, independent media and, and, and journalists, uh, putting them under surveillance in many instances, uh, making the job of journalists actually very difficult in India. India currently ranks 161 out of 180 in terms of uh, freedom of the press. It is one of the most dangerous countries in the world to exert you know, that profession. Uh, Gio, we know that the BJP released its manifesto yesterday. What can you glean from it? I mean, in terms of policies that can be expected? Yes, I mean, in, in, in many ways, you know, it's more of the same. It's the building blocks that have made, you know, the success of the BJP and of uh, Narendra Modi. A strong emphasis on major uh, public infrastructure, a strong emphasis on uh, public redistribution and, and, and welfare schemes and, and, and the maintenance of, you know, the, 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 the existing, you know, subsidy uh, system. What stands out compared to previous manifestos is how everything is organized around the persona of the prime minister. Indian politics, uh, national politics has become more and more centralized and more and more personalized uh, over the past decade. And, and um, the, uh, the manifesto reflects that uh, the, the, the BJP is not even talking about the government's promises or, or the party's promises, but there are Modi's promises, right? The, the, everything the state does is mm. presented as a derivative of, you know, the, the, the generosity of the leader. And, um, and so it's heavily personalized. But in terms of building blocks and major items, yes, it's, there, there's, a, there's a lot of continuity. That's right. In terms of the impact in particular, the manifesto highlighted its focus on the likes of women, the young, the poor. Uh, what does it mean in terms of unemployment? I mean, what will be addressed and how, how, much, how much do you put weight on its focus? So the focus is there, but it's not it's not exactly sure that, you know, the policy solutions are there to address some of the, you know, the key issues with the economy. And it's actually significant or significant that uh, the government speaks about, you know, inclusion, financial inclusion or. Uh, and, 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 and through uh, through uh, the distribution of welfare or policy that targets uh, women or the youth. 
uh, but they're not exactly addressing the core issues, which is, you know, 10 years of, you know, re relatively jobless growth, where uh, 10 years of uh, concentration of capital uh, in India. India's economy has been rising. It's one of the fastest uh, growing economies in the world. But the fruits, the benefit of that growth are immensely uh, concentrated. Right. Uh, and these are issues that uh, are not addressed uh, in the manifesto. Uh, Gio, we talk about how Modi is popular. Is he popular across the country? Can he win the support in the South, which has traditionally voted opposition? So the South is, you know, basically, uh, you know, bastions that have resisted so far to uh, the expense of uh, the uh, BJP. The, the prime minister personally is popular even in those states, but voters have at their disposal parties and government that in a way already caters to their needs. These are the states that are, you know, the most performing in terms of economy. Uh, they are also uh, the best state, the most effective states, states in terms of welfare provision. And so, uh, and, and these are states that historically uh, are somewhat, you know, reluctant or, or wary about, uh, you know, the tropes of, you know, nationalism, which they see as, you know, some, some, some version of, you know, a northern Hindi-speaking uh, vision of, of India's nationalism. And so they sort of stay away uh, from that. These are regions also that have very strong regional identities grounded in language and history and culture. And, 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 and they have actually these right. models to sort of cling on uh, and, and, and so far resisted. But there's no doubt that uh, the popularity of uh, Narendra Modi personally uh, has greatly expanded.